One of the first things you notice driving through Israel are the different color of license plates. Yellow for Israelis and green and white for Palestinians. It's one of the many symbols of division that's come to define life here. I'm driving down Road 60, the main north-south highway straddling the West Bank. Out the window is the impossible to ignore concrete security wall separating Palestinians from hundreds of thousands of Jewish settlers. They live mere miles from each other and yet have very different ideas on whose land this is. At any moment during the day, you can have an infiltrator come in here and try to stab people to death. Now that's just the honest to God truth. This is also one of the most peaceful areas I've ever lived in. That's Ben Goldstein, an American who moved with his family from Florida to a settlement block called Gush Etzion. Goldstein's one of the estimated 60,000 Americans historian Sarah Hirshhorn estimates lives in the West Bank. American settlers are, as Hirshhorn puts it, strikingly overrepresented. They make up roughly 15% of all settlers in the West Bank. But across the rest of Israel, Americans represent a much smaller fraction of the population. I wanted to know why families like the Goldsteins are moving to the flashpoint of what's probably the most controversial conflict in the world, to a place that their own government has long considered an obstacle to peace. What made you want to move here from the United States? When you come here as an American, you start to truly, and I say this as my own experience, truly feel a sense of community and life. I didn't feel that in America. Goldstein represents a certain brand of Jewish nationalism, perhaps best understood by watching his YouTube page. Hey guys, Goldstein here. I'm about to make a video that's gonna piss off a lot of idiots in the world. Goldstein voluntarily patrols his neighborhood against perceived threats. Threats to a state whose borders he says were laid out in the Bible and date back thousands of years. Where we're standing is the spinal column of Israel. Palestinians see it differently. As more and more settlements spring up, they're irreversibly changing the demographics of the West Bank and undermining any chance at a Palestinian state. In what ways do the settlements potentially complicate a two-state solution? As you can see behind me, the settlements are blocking the expansion of the Palestinian state. And it will be very hard to have an independent state and viable if we leave all the settlements uh, intact. Israel will have to evict most of the settlements. If you look at the settler population as a whole, an estimated one-third move here because of the cost of living. Housing here is government subsidized. But that wasn't part of Shlomo Vile's calculation when he and his wife made the move from Chicago to the heavily fortified settlement of Bat Ein. I keep hearing this term, and I don't, I'm probably gonna butcher it, but Aliyah? Aliyah. Aliyah. Um, what does that mean? Aliyah literally means to go up. The term is used most commonly in, the, in relation to, to Jews who live outside of Israel, moving to Israel to live, to make Aliyah. That the U.S. has long considered this settlement, and others like it, an obstacle to peace, doesn't concern Vile. This needs to be part of Israel as much as, any, as Tel Aviv, and uh, our government doesn't recognize that yet. And I think our, our government in that sense is the, is the uh, you know, is an obstacle to, to peace. The Israeli government has been squabbling over settlements since 1967, when the army captured the West Bank and a small group of Israelis moved in. Since then, every U.S. president has taken the position that the settlements are an impediment to a two-state solution. President Trump has been more accommodating. He declared the contested city of Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, and picked a hardline ambassador who doesn't just support the settlements, but has raised tens of millions of dollars for their construction. Do you think that the settlers feel emboldened in any way by the Trump administration? Trump's administration is a gift for the settlers. They feel that they have America behind them, supporting the most extremist policy of Israel in many, many years. When Trump talk about uh, the settlements in Israel, he doesn't talk about illegal settlements. Everything here is legal. That's our land. There's no question. There's no doubt about it. And that's what Trump says. So that's now what America says. This couple lives at Kishwela Farms with their four kids. They're both children of American immigrants and have dual nationality. 
You could live anywhere in Israel. Why live in the West Bank? I think we feel some connection to here because uh, this is the place our parents came when they did Aliyah. They wanted a meaningful place that they'll feel close to the land. Last year, the number of West Bank settlers grew at nearly twice the rate of Israel's general population. With peace prospects seemingly at a standstill, these settlers, and the Americans among them, are going to keep building. A lot of people think they really know about uh, Palestinian-Israeli uh, conflict, but really nobody knows. Everybody thinks they know all over the world. They think they know Germans, Europeans, Americans, Canadians, it doesn't matter where or whatever, they think they know, they know everything, they know the answer.